One of the things machine knitters love about electronic machines is that there is no limit to the size that your design can be. Whereas with a punch card, we are limited to 24 stitches because that's the size of most punch cards. The whole bed may be covered with the design because the design will repeat across, but it can only be a 24 stitch wide design. However, length is not limited. So there is a trick that we punch card users can employ. I've been using this design in wedding and anniversary gifts for years. This is the original version. It's found in the book Kangaroo Covers, and this one is actually a blanket that folds into the pillows. Here's the front of the book. You'll recognize it if you have it. Here is the lower half of the front of the book, and the punch cards for what God has joined together appear on page 14, so you don't have to redesign them. There are two other ways that I know of that you could get this kind of effect in your knitting. One is to work all the words as intarsia. That's entirely doable, but it makes for a really big job to put a phrase as long as what God has joined together, along with possibly some names and perhaps a date. Method two is to duplicate stitch. So you would make a chart and then hand work it as basically a form of embroidery. Again, doable, but a colossal project. So in this movie, I'm going to show you how to use the punch card in a new way. First of all, we're gonna knit sideways and sew three panels together to get the three lines of type. We're going to use the Fair Isle settings on the machine, so we will have floats. But because this is an isolated motif and almost a cross between Fair Isle and Intarsia, we don't want holes to form where the color changes. And it will. They will form. So we have to do something to stop it. So the second half of the movie is about the technique that you're watching now, and I will describe it in more detail. Now we're going to go into how would you create a punch card to make your words show up if you didn't have one from a book such as Kangaroo Covers. The setup is going to vary a little bit with the word processing program you use. I'm demonstrating using Microsoft Publisher, not the latest version. It will work in Microsoft Word, and I think I have succeeded in Open Office as well. You just have to wiggle your settings. First thing we want to do is create a really long working space. So I've asked for a banner 96 inches by eight and a half inches. This option may possibly appear in the page size menu. It can be part of page setup or print setup. If all you have is normal printer paper, which is all I have today, you'll want to select eight and a half by 11. If you're in the United States, it's slightly different elsewhere and the landscape setting. That will mean that we are printing along the 11 inch length of the paper, maximizing the use of it, because we don't need the whole eight and a half inches anyway to get letters that will fill the punch card. The largest point size that appears in the menu is 72, and that's not adequate, but we can actually get a much larger size in there if we type it in ourselves. Just clear the box and it'll accept what you type in. 200 is what I'm going to demonstrate with. 300 is just about all that will fit in the text box that we can utilize. But be careful with 300 because letters like lowercase g and y that go below the line may get cut off if you select 300. So we'll work with two today. Size your text box if possible to match the width of the useful area of the punch card, just to make things easier, which is five and a half inches. Centering the text box in the space on the page is not essential, but it will ensure better printing. Now, type a few test words into the text box. Now comes what I consider the fun part. We're font shopping. Some fonts lend themselves much, much better than others to knitting. So scroll through what's available. These fancy scripts are very attractive, but they don't work well at all in my experience. Simpler fonts work better. 
instinctively because you know that rows are shorter than stitches, so what we punch into a card tends to get shortened, you might want to select automatically a tall, thin font, knowing that it would become more squat. That is, in fact, backwards. The reason is that we are knitting the words across rows rather than stitches. Therefore, the letters become more condensed in width rather than getting shortened in length. With that in mind, these are all bad choices. But in order to change fonts, you do highlight one of the words, scroll through, select a font, and change it to whatever you'd like to see. What tends to work out best is simply shaped letters that are relatively thick in the line that forms the letter so that we've got enough stitches and rows to be seen. And I'm going to try a few of them here and then we'll look at it. We want them to look fairly open also. Bradley handwriting, that's a possibility. We'll try that one. Very often selecting bold improves matters because you've got enough for the stitches to define if you embolden the type. There's a possibility. Anything that says condensed is almost certainly the wrong way to go because it's already squished in left to right and it's going to get more that way because it's going to run along the rows. If you know the name of a font that you like and you don't see it in the list, it's really easy to miss one. You can type it in at the top and see if anything pops up to match. I know I've used this one before, so I've typed in Seago, and here it is. We'll try that. So these are what I want to print. Now, in order to use the printout to help myself make a punch card, I am going to want all of the letters in one word on one page if possible. If they must be divided between pages, that is okay too, but I want a whole letter on a page. So I'm going back and forth to print preview, adding a space here, taking a space away there, and seeing what I can do to make this come out. That obviously isn't ideal. I should make it clear you can work with it if you get clean prints to the edges but I would really prefer all my letters either to be on one page or at least whole letters on a page. Some words simply won't fit on a single page. If you're going to type out February or anniversary, it won't. So in that case, we strive to get complete letters on a page. This would not be that much fun to work with, so let's figure out if we can get test-ing on two pages. It may be easier to add unnecessary spaces and take them out later when you're taping this together to make your punch card so that each letter gets firmly placed on the page and printed nicely. Here we go. This will work nicely. So we can toss some of these away before we even try making a punch card. This is Times New Roman, a very popular font, but see how thin some of the letter is, and how the letters come to very sharp points, that is not going to translate well into stitches and rows. So I'll discard those. I'd rather waste a little printer paper than punch card material for sure. This one is a possibility, but it has an issue that I see. The crossbars on the T's are very, very short. That is going to get shorter because of knitting it across the rows, and so I really don't think this one is a winner either. Off it goes. This one has possibilities. The shapes are simple. The thickness of each letter is enough that I think it will get one and sometimes two stitches to define it. I think I would give this one a try. This one is probably a little thin, but I wouldn't absolutely rule it out. That is worthy of a try also. If you are able to get this kind of clear punch card material, I highly recommend it. Orient it as shown with the width of the punch card, as noted by the X's, across the letters, roll it out, 
and trace the letters onto the card. Then punch out the holes where a letter is crossing a punch card starter hole. This will involve a few judgment calls. Ideally, you do have rolls, but if you don't, you can always hook multiple cards together. And if your punch cards are white card stock, you can see the letters through the tiny little starter holes. It's just a lot harder on your eyes and concentration. Once you have a finished punch card, either you followed a chart like the one in kangaroo covers or you've created your own. And by the way, do expect this to be some work. It's a sizable project. It's easier to punch a card that somebody already created and tested, but it is some work too. It's a big card. And creating your own may take hours of experimentation and perfecting, but it is worth doing, I think. You make sure that you insert it into the machine so that it will read correctly. It needs to be leading edge should be the first word you want to come out but flipped over so you're looking at the back of the card. This is because the work comes out with the knit side away from us. Locate the first patterning row and lock the card on that row. This is really easy to do on the Singer Studio Silver Reed type machines. Just roll the card in one row at a time and then flip the lock lever. When it is locked, it will show you that it is selected. For this project, I need 40 some plain rows before the word begins because I want to have some space on either side of the cushion curve. Otherwise, it's hard to read. So I can just lock the card and knit those rows and then I can set up for Fair Isle. This strip of knitting is only 24 stitches wide. Therefore, the pattern won't try to repeat and that means I don't require the magic cams. You would if you wanted to knit one word in the center of an entire pillow. This is a Singer 740, and all machines of this type are supposed to use yarn separators while knitting Fair Isle. I confess I don't always do it, but since I'm demonstrating publicly, I thought perhaps I'd be good. And this is how you set them up. They are inserted beneath needles four, five, and six to either side of the work. There are three out of work and then the yarn separators. Once the separator is beneath the needles, push them all the way back. Anchor color two, either weighting it with a clothespin or using a loop. Color one goes above the yarn separator, color two goes below it. We set the card to advance, change to Fair Isle settings, which might be called knit in on some older models. Sometimes you adjust the stitch size on the dial. For this project, I am not doing so. And when we knit across, some of the stitches will have knitted in white and the remainder in the background color. First, I'm going to show you the method given in the manual to prevent holes forming at the edges. I'm knotting little loops into the ends of mine. You are really supposed to weight the ends with a clothespin, but it's such a hazard for me when trying to demonstrate that I can't hold my hand just where I want to and I may get the yarn tail up amongst the brushes or wheels, which is no good at all, that I am going to cheat and use loops. To follow the manual instructions, we hang one length of main yarn to each side of where the colored contrast is going to begin. And we will use those loops of yarn to wrap adjoining main yarn stitches so as to prevent holes. This is quite similar to what goes on in intarsia knitting. The manual only instructs you to wrap the end on the carriage side, and that does make quite a difference. I have found that it doesn't hurt anything to wrap both ends, and it can make even more difference. I started out this sample wrapping both ends, mostly to get my yarn knitted in and down so that it wasn't going to get in the way. Now I'm wrapping only on the carriage side and the next needle past the white stitches in case that's not very obvious to you. So there are two strands of yarn. We lift up the nearest one 
wrap the nearest background color needle and do that on the carriage side only over and over. If you are knitting a garment, I think this is the way to go. It is not as secure as some of the others I'm going to show you, not as much control of the holes, but it causes no extra floats. We only have our fair isle floats. However, if you are knitting a bag that will be lined, a pillow that will be lined, a pocket that will be lined, any a purse perhaps, anything where there will be a backing and the floats don't matter and the lack of flexibility that floats cause doesn't matter, I have an alternate suggestion for you. The limitations on the holes opening up at color changes is even more effective if we wrap more needles. This may mean because we're making letters and they have openings in the middle, wrapping, wrapping the adjoining needle at the end as well as possibly one or more in the center where the background color appears and it ties everything together. Of course, it makes the fabric stiffer and thicker and makes more floats. But in the case of a pillow or a purse, I not only don't care, I actually like that effect. Here's the first line of type on the pillow. What God, part of the phrase, what God has joined together. I used the manual method and it worked quite well, but you see that at the beginnings of some words and at corners, there are noticeable holes. It's okay if you choose that method because those holes can be hand-stitched, closed, but I do find that the manual method has some limitations. So to step it up just a little bit, we can wrap both edges of the work, still using two separate pieces of yarn, one hung to either side of where the words are appearing, and make sure that the adjoining background stitch is wrapped every single row on both sides of the work. That helps quite a bit to further eliminate holes. But remember that if knitting a pillow, as I'm doing, we really don't care that there's extra yarn and extra floats. And I have found that sometimes crossing over the work so that it's further tied together with an X of the floats we're using to, it's basically a manual weaving technique. Um, it does create a stiffer spot where the words are, but it also closes up the holes even more. So here I'm still using two strands of yarn, but rather than going up each edge of the color contrast knitting that forms the word, I'm letting those two strands switch positions as I wrap the adjoining background stitch so that they tie everything together almost lacing it together, which makes the formation of holes very unlikely. You don't have to be perfectly consistent. If there are only one to three stitches between where the two strands of yarn are going to be hand woven in, I may just let them run up the sides and then intermittently cross them. I've already mentioned that in open letters, sometimes it's good to add your manual weaving yarn into the center of the letter to cut down on pulling apart and the appearance of holes. But here's a good look at that happening. The words has joined were knitted like that, and you can see how nice and tight the connections are between the two colors. But there's one more method that is actually even easier and works even better. Since I have decided to allow myself to crisscross the work, with the yarn because I do not mind that it makes extra yarn in this spot because I'm going to line the pillow. There's really no need for two separate pieces. I can work across starting on the side that the carriage ended on and pick up whatever stitches that I think would help to solidify the work and go back and forth every row that way. I have also found that sometimes going two stitches out for your first wrap rather than one stitch away from the contrasting yarn is helpful. That's particularly true if the contrasting yarn is in the same position two rows in a row. I don't really like to have my wraps occur right above one another. I think that kind of makes holes more likely. This creates no more floats than the last method. 
And here are the results. And I think this is really the most solidly pulled together of all methods. There's what the back looks like. Not beautiful, but we'll hide it. And it requires no hand finishing. And here's the pillow I've been working on. It has the wedding date and the couple's name on the back, but I'm not going to show it to you because it's a surprise and they don't know it's coming. You may recall there were some little holes in these areas, but they're not there now because they are easy to hand stitch closed, and I did that. So there you go. That's how you can say it with punch cards without any size limitations.